is the will of God that we should be in good health always and be healed of every infirmity. If you don't need healing, someone around you definitely might need it. This is your opportunity and for those sick around you to be connected to the teaching of God's word for healing. Don't forget, God's word is God's medicine. I prophesy as your amen will come like thunder, you will swim in the miraculous. Power City International presents Harvest of Healing, Miracles, Signs and Wonders, ministering Dr. Abel Daminer. Date 11th April to 18th April 2021. Time Monday to Saturday, 6 p.m. daily, and on Sunday, first service 8 a.m. and second service 11 a.m. GMT plus one, and a rebroadcast on the following radio stations. Radio Aquaibom 90.5 FM Uyo 11 AM to 1 PM XL FM 106.9 Uyo 1 PM to 3 PM daily Unio FM 100.7 Uyo 3 PM to 5 PM Comfort FM 95.1 Uyo 6 PM to 8 PM Inspiration FM 105.9 Uyo 9 PM to 10 PM Heritage Radio 104.9 Uyo 10 p.m. till midnight daily and also on Kingdom Life Network Station. Also live on Facebook at Abel Damino Public Figure, YouTube Abel Damino Ministries International, Twitter Abel Damino and Instagram at Abel Damino. Watch real time. Venue Power City International, number 98 Wangibo Road, Uyo, Akwaibom State, Nigeria. Host Doctors Abel and Rachel Daminer.
are not the tail. You are above and not below. You are redeemed. Redeemed from sickness. Redeemed from death. Redeemed from sin. By the power of the Holy Ghost. It's your season to win. Take your healing. Take your freedom. Take your favor. Give the Lord a shot. Brina kakara da sekele de brina agaba joko lo de brina koroto sikele ne mengle nengro de joko lo de brina kakolo de boja kele de baraka to sekia ege boza kala na mengle de boro koto sakala de brine la koto bigeline me member ege de sekele de brina kala de baha ege bozoko ege lenema karato sekele de brina kakoroto sukele de brina kaloto bogoli ne mohondia enge bozoko lo de brina kakali de bo Le boroko to seke le de brina kakolo no boja kele ne me le grede zeke le grede zeke le de bebre engele ne moja kele ne mamondo ro de boseke le de brina katolia. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, we come humbly and respectfully before Your holy written word, and we thank You for the mighty Holy Spirit that lives on our inside. Thank you for the privilege to learn, to grow, to be equipped, and to walk in the light that your word makes available to us. And we know that tonight revelation knowledge is gifted everybody connected to this service. The eyes of men's understanding flooded with light. Whatever is not planted by God rooted out, bodies and yokes destroyed. And we decree that sick bodies healed by the power of God's word. And we rejoice that by the end of this service we'll all be the better for it. So we give you praise, glory, and honor for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name, and every believer sees a powerful amen. amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's release our faith together. As we say these words, I am born of God. I am born of the world. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the word. I do the word naturally. Therefore today, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus name and every believer says a powerful amen. We want to welcome everybody connected to this service by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, the social media community. We're so glad to welcome all of you to the service tonight. And we want to also welcome all of the Aquaibom State audience around Aquaibom State, wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice. We want to welcome you to this special service tonight. And we want you to do me the favor, invite a friend, call somebody, reach out to somebody, ask them to tune to this radio station right now. Life is flowing through the airwaves. What a joy to have all of you tonight connected to this service. Our social media community, like you've always done, let's do it again tonight. Help us share the video. Connect some people that are sick. Reach out to some people who need healing miracles. Some people need a touch of God. Reach out to people who are expecting, you know, signs and miracles for their lives and for their bodies to connect to this service. It's going to be an exciting adventure in the word of his grace. So help me share the video. Share with all the groups on your page. Tag some people. Put them on monogram, telegram, WhatsApp groups. Let's get into the word tonight and enjoy all that Christ has made available to us. 
All our house centers and Bible study centers and all our campuses all over the world. What a joy to welcome all of you and have all of you connected to the service. It's going to be exciting tonight. So you grab your pen, your notebook, your Bible. You can be seated with your sweet smart self as we get into the word tonight. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Praise God. All right. We're still examining the harvest of healing, miracles, signs, and wonders. We have been examining how you can use your faith to be healed. How to use your faith to be healed. The book of Luke chapter 5 verse number 17. Luke chapter 5 verse number 17. And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching. That there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by. Which were come out of every town of Galilee. And Judea and Jerusalem and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Jesus was teaching and the power of the Lord was present to heal. A man was brought through the roof. That's the background of the story. Some friends went and brought their friend and put him down through the roof. And as they brought him through the roof, they dropped him before Jesus. Look at Luke chapter 5 verse number 20. Luke chapter 5 verse number 20. And when he saw their faith, when he saw their faith, he said unto, them, unto him, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. <clears throat> now, Luke was the one writing. And Luke identified, you know, what had been known in all of Jesus' healing miracles. Jesus saw their faith. That's exactly what Luke observed. Jesus never mentioned faith at all. It was Luke who said, when Jesus saw their faith. Luke observed that. Which means that when it comes to the healing power, faith is perceivable. When it comes to the healing power of God, faith is perceivable. And faith is tangible and faith is definite when it comes to the healing power of God. When he saw their faith, in other words, he saw their action. He saw something that was done to receive healing. You discover that that narrative goes through the three gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke. And you know, John didn't mention that because John never majored on miracles. There were just about three major miracles in the book of John, which was, you know, in John chapter, chapter 2, chapter 4, and chapter 9. All right? So you discover that in healing miracles, two elements are always mentioned. In healing miracles, two elements are always mentioned. Number one, the power of God. Number two, faith. Number one, the power of God. Number two, faith. So, the part that God plays is his power. And the part that man plays is faith. So, God's part is the power. Man's part is faith. The question should now be, where can I find God's power? Where can I find God's power? Here he said, as he was teaching, the power of God was present to heal. What if he was in teaching? What if he was in there? What if there was no service? So we will now go through some examples we have seen before. In Matthew chapter 8, where he touched the leper, the leper was healed. Then the centurion said, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy. Jesus said, I will come and heal him. And then the centurion said, you don't have to come to my house. Speak the word only and my servant shall be whole. For I am a man under authority. Having soldiers under me, I say to one come, he comes. And I say to one goes, and he goes. So you speak the word only and my servant shall be whole. Jesus recognized a fundamental thing. He said, authority. I'm a man under authority. That was fundamental. So it also means that just the fact that he spoke, 
He said, my servant shall be whole. You speak. All I want from you is to say something. The fact that Jesus was teaching doesn't necessarily mean I have to be in a teaching service to be healed. Or I have to be in the physical location where teaching is taking place to be healed. It just means that if the word is taught at all, healing is made available. If the word is taught at all. So it could mean say it or record it and send it to me via telegram. Record it and send it to me via WhatsApp. It could mean I am listening to a teaching on healing. It could also mean I just listen to a teaching on healing. <clears throat> it could also mean something that was taught 30 years or 40 years ago. I am playing it back for my healing. So, which means everywhere that word is taught. And every time the word of God is taught, the power of God is present. Everywhere the word is taught, and every time the word of God is taught, the power of God is present. In Luke chapter 5, we are not told the content of the sermon. He was teaching, and his audience were even his critics. The doctors of the law and the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Yet, the power of God was present because he was teaching the world. The power of God was present because he was teaching the world. So, wherever the word is taught, whether in written form, oral form, documented form, and it doesn't matter how long the word was taught, it carries the power of God to heal. So which means that at the teaching of the word, like I said, in any format, the power of God is present. So the power of God is present wherever the word of God is taught. The power of God is present whenever the word of God is taught. So therefore, when the word is being taught, whether it is being taught to me directly or it is taught in my presence or in my absence like in Luke chapter 5 verse 17 or the teacher taught then they send or send to me what the teacher taught in one format or the other whether I was physically present or not I can release my faith I can release my faith to be healed please pay attention the word release my faith is a phrase, a terminology. It actually means to use my faith or to believe. To release my faith means to use my faith or to believe. So releasing your faith is to believe what is being said. Alright? Now, when the word is taught on any subject, you didn't hear that. When the word of God is taught on any subject or on every subject of scripture, as long as Jesus is being taught, the power of God is there. When the word of God is taught on any subject of scripture, as long as Jesus is being taught, the power of God is there. It doesn't have to be teaching on healing. It can be a teaching on righteousness. It can be a teaching on the new creation. It can be a teaching on angels. Every time the word is taught, the power of God is present to heal. In Matthew chapter 17, Jesus said, If you had faith like a grain of mustard seed, if you had faith like a grain of mustard seed, now, two things. Every Jew knows what a mustard seed is. It is the tiniest seed in the world of agriculture. If you had faith like a grain of mustard seed, you would say, it will obey you and nothing shall be impossible to you. Where the word is taught, 
and where the world is focused on Jesus who is the subject of the scriptures. John 1.1 1, 1, In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So Jesus is the focus of all writings. He is the focus of all writings in scripture. And his redemptive work is called healing in the sense that he reconciles us with God. The redemptive work of Jesus is called healing in the sense that he reconciles us with God. First Peter chapter 2 verse 24. First Peter chapter 2 verse 24. <clears throat> Who his own self bore our sins in his own body on the tree. That we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. That basically refers to our reconciliation with God. But you see, the sign of that reconciliation or the physical sign of that reconciliation that we have with God is physical healing. So physical healing is a sign of the redemptive sacrifice of Jesus. That means that even when you listen to the subject of righteousness, that things are set right with God. The subject of righteousness means that things are set right with God. 2 Corinthians 5.21 tells us, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21. For he hath made him to be seen for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. The book of Romans chapter 5 verse 17. Romans chapter 5 verse 17. For if by one man's offense death reign by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. They shall reign who have received the gift of righteousness. Romans chapter 5 verse 1, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So, just by reading that and knowing that things have been set right, with God is a healing in itself. Just reading those realities and knowing that everything that concerns us have been set right with God is a healing in itself. Because on its own, of its own, it provides a platform. Those scriptures we just read on its own provides a platform to receive divine healing. It provides a platform to receive divine healing because it is a sign of our right standing. It is a sign of God doing something right in us and through us. It is a sign of our right standing. It is a sign of God doing something through us and something in us. Which is what we call the gift of righteousness. The gift of righteousness. So hearing about it that God has set us right. That God has restored us and put us in fellowship with Jesus. The sign of that provides a platform for our physical healing. The sign of that provides a platform for our physical healing. So, just about everything around Jesus, even before you understood Isaiah 53, which he provides reconciliation, forgiveness, and all that you observe, if you pay attention over the years, People have believed God for healing using Isaiah 53 and they got healed. Even though Isaiah 53 is not a scripture for physical healing. 
is a scripture for our reconciliation with God and that reconciliation is called healing. By his tribes, you were healed. The healing there is our reconciliation with God. He wasn't talking of physical healing. But that healing there, the sign of it is our physical healing. All right? Because healing is a sign of the redemptive sacrifice of Jesus. Almost everything you read in Isaiah 53 is about sin and reconciliation with God. Observe Isaiah 53 verse 3. <clears throat> Let's read. He is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Next verse. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Next verse. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. That's not physical healing. That's healing from sins, iniquities and transgressions. Are you observing? Now give me the next verse. Mm -mm. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way and the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all. So that scripture is about sin and reconciliation with God. So physical healing is a sign of the redemptive work of Christ. That means that every time I hear about the love of God, what do you think Jesus' crowd got healed in their numbers? They got healed in their numbers because he was always, always teaching about what his redemptive sacrifice was going to provide. Mm -mm. He talks about the love of God, the compassion of God, God putting everything right in the death of his son, how God wants to bring us into fellowship with him. That's a platform to believe God for the healing of your body. The first thing we said was, when the word of God is taught on any subject, it doesn't have to be healing. On any subject, the power of God is present to heal. In Luke chapter 5 verse 17 where we read, the guys were outside. Yet, they brought their friend in a two by four and opened the roof and dropped him down. Why? Because every time the word of God is taught, healing is available. How many of you observe that Luke did not give us the content and the title of what Jesus was teaching? He just says as he was teaching, the power of God was present. So that means it doesn't matter what subject is being taught. When the word of God is taught on any subject, God's power is available to heal. Whether in midweek service, Sunday service, a conference, every time I am taught the word, I can release my faith to be healed. Two elements we said. Number one, faith. Number two, the power of God. Faith, man's part. The power of God, God's part. And the power of God is present where the word of God is taught. I repeat, the power of God is present wherever the word of God is taught. So that means every time the word of God is taught, everywhere the word of God is taught, every format with which the word is taught, whether in singing or writing or whether it is recorded, it is the word that brings healing. If it is music, 
It is the word of God in that music, not the melody that brings healing. Oh yes, it's good to have healing meetings, miracle meetings. All the meetings do is to help you set your mind. That's what the healing does. I mean the teachings do. When we have conferences like this dedicated to teach healing, to teach miracles, to teach signs and wonders, it's not like it is in meetings like this that the power is present. The power has always been present in all the teachings. Even if what I am teaching is service in the house of God, serving the body of Christ, the power of God to heal is always available. It is not the particular subject that determines the power. It is the fact that it is the word of God that determines the power. So why do we have healing meetings? So that we can have emphasis on healing to set people's minds to know how to receive healing whenever the word of God is taught. It's like someone said, I didn't come to church. And I said to him, why? He says, because I am sick. <laughs> it's like somebody who says I couldn't go to the hospital to see the doctor why? because I am sick <laughs> I didn't come to church why? I was very sick it's like saying I couldn't go to the hospital why? I was very sick Jesus said is any among you sick? Let him stay at home. Is that what James said? Is any among you sick? Let him stay at home. Let him call for the elders of the church to pray over him. Why? Because when the elders pray, we have church. The sick need church. Because that fellowship generates power to heal. That fellowship generates power for miracles. You are not coming to church because you don't feel fine. Means you don't know what happens in church. If you stay at home and you don't come to church because you are not feeling fine, means you have not understood the purpose of the church. Hey. As the word of God is taught, prayer is made. A, a, an atmosphere is created for healing. That is the right time to release your faith to be healed. You see some people who don't know what you know. They don't even know what you know. They don't know much. You know. Some of them just know little. When they are sick, you hear them say, take me to church. Take me to church. Find church. Take me to church. That means they even know better than some people who say they know what. You know what and you're sick. And then you stay at home and say, I can't come to church because I'm sick. And somebody who doesn't know what, when he's sick, the first thing he thinks of is, take me to church. Meaning that person understands church more than you who knows what. It is when you are sick that you need church. Yeah. Glory to God. I'm teaching good. The guy who says I am sick, I can't, I can't come to church. But I can go to hospital. He is sick to a point where he can't come to church. But he can go to hospital. It shows that the man is in unbelief. The person who say he is sick and cannot come to church means he does not believe in what happens when we gather. It means he has no faith in what the scriptures teach about the gathering of the saints. In Luke chapter 5, Jesus must have taught for hours. They took someone who could not walk through the roof. That's a lot of stress. But they found their way to bring him in and the man walked. Faith as a grain of mustard seed. 
So, where the word is taught, the power of God is present. Imagine you releasing your faith deliberately that you're going to service. You say, as I go to service today and the word of God is taught and the Holy Ghost is giving a free course in the service, I shall be healed. I shall be healed. I know I'm not feeling too strong, but once I can just get into the fellowship of the brethren and the word of God is taught and the Holy Ghost is giving a free course in the service, I shall be made whole. That's somebody who understands what happens when we assemble together in church. Oh yes. Oh yes. That's a believer in the word of God. That's a believer in the word of God. Are we in the building here? That's a believer in the word of God. Listen carefully. When we are believers gather, the power of God is present. The moment believers gather, the power of God is present. There is corporate power when believers gather. What is the church? The church is the pillar and ground of the truth. 1 Timothy 3.16 1 <clears throat> Timothy 3.16 Give me 15. 15. 1 Timothy 3.15 But if I tarry long that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God which is the church of the living God the pillar and ground of the truth. Matthew 18.20 We are two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. So the moment two or three gather together around the word of God, Jesus is present. And wherever Jesus is present, his power is present. Anywhere Jesus is present, his power is present. I'm talking about the ecclesia of God. We are believers come together to carry out the will of God on the earth. 1 Corinthians 3.16 1 Corinthians 3.16 Brother Paul says to the church at Corinth, Know ye not that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. Temple of God individually and collectively. Ephesians 2.21 Ephesians 2.21 In whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. The building fit together. First Peter chapter 2 verse 5. First Peter chapter 2 verse number 5. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house. And holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So, there's something that is clear. Corporately, individually, we are the temple of God. 1 Corinthians 6.16 6, <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 6.16 6, What? Know ye not that he who is joined to an harlot is one body. For two saith he shall be one flesh. We are one with the Lord. Joined together. That's a fact. When we are together, it doesn't have to be Sunday service or Wednesday service or all night prayer. It could just be the brethren coming together in my house. God is there. I remember when I got born again newly, we had a lot of those meetings, those fellowships, where brethren just gathered together. We could just say, bro, let us meet in brother so-and-so's house. Let's just meet there and share fellowship. We come together and then we start singing. We're together again. Just praising the Lord. Something good is going to happen. Something greater is in store. We're together again, just praising the Lord. We just sing and be happy. Then we blast in tongues. We blast in tongues, we blast in tongues. And then a brother will stop the prayer and share with us some scriptures he came by. And we're all edified and we pray and we tell the brother, see you another time. 
and we dismiss. From time to time, we just gather like that. Those meetings where atmospheres of God's power where anything can happen. It doesn't ask where two or three are gathered. I'm there. Anywhere Jesus is, his power is. His power is. It's a fellowship. It's not a gossip. And it's not an organized fellowship. It's just spontaneous. Brethren meet together. Sometimes you're strolling and you see a group of two, three brethren and as you meet, you're just tonguing. What's up, man? <laughs> That's how we start our discourse. We pray in tongues first. That says the tone of the discourse. You know that we can't say that and start gossiping. No, you can't meet brethren. That already sets the tone for the discourse. So we are edifying each other. By the time we're through, see you later. Everybody finds their way. That is how brethren are supposed to fellowship. Creating atmospheres of God's power where healing can happen at any time. Am I teaching good? Yeah. Where two or three are gathered together, he's there in their midst. Jesus honors the fellowship of brethren. So when James says, is there any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. He didn't say let him call for the elders of the village. Elders of the church. What James is saying is that if a brother is sick, go and have church in his house. If a sister is sick, go and have church in their house. Go there, sing some songs, sing some fellowship songs, sing some worship songs, and after singing, pray in tongues. And as you pray in tongues, there's a word of knowledge, there's a prophecy, there's a revelation. Based on that, you minister to the person. Yeah. Yeah. You regulate God's power. Yeah, you generate current to solve issues and meet needs. Somebody say, I hear you. Yeah. Yeah. We are the powerhouse of God on it. So when we come together, we produce the corporate power of God. We produce the corporate power of God. And as the days go by, those kind of meetings will be very essential. Those kind of meetings, those kind of fellowship, short, short fellowship meetings, uh, those kind of brief fellowship meetings will become essential. Through the course of the day, through the course of the week, from time to time, brethren just assemble, just assemble and blast, just assemble and generate power. And a brother could be going through a struggle in such little meetings, a word of comfort, a word of knowledge, strength is given to the brother to overcome. There's been a lot of selfishness. People just thinking of themselves. People just thinking of themselves. People just thinking of themselves. But that has to break. As people grow in the knowledge of Christ, self gives way. We start thinking and thinking about one another, looking after each other, looking for how to be strength, to bring comfort, to bring courage, to bring edification to one another. So whenever we meet, no matter how brief the meeting, edification took place. That's how the church ought to be. The pillar, the pillar, the pillar, the pillar of the truth. Praise God. James 5, 14. Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him. Take church to his house. James 5, 14 and 15. Now, do you recognize that when we gather like this, the power of God is present. Sometimes, we just sing it away and never believe it. You know? Sometimes, we just sing it away and never believe it. We sing songs. That talk about what God is doing among us. But we never believe it. Why? Because we thought it's just a song. You know. <laughs> as we gather and your spirit walks within us. As we gather may we glorify your name. Knowing well that as our hearts begin to worship 
You'll be blessed because I came. You'll be blessed because I came. So I have told you in my song that you will be blessed because I came. Therefore, you better get ready to be blessed. And I better make sure I bring blessing. We sing songs and mean them. We sing songs and take them serious. Why? Because every opportunity we have to assemble or to fellowship, whether individually or collectively, is an opportunity to make power available. Praise God. I say praise God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> now, what about knowing that the healer is there when we gather? And you release your faith because you have seen him do it again and again. When we come together, the power of God is present. Where the word is taught, when the word is taught, in whatever form the word is taught, the power of God is present. You didn't hear that. Let me repeat again. Where the word is taught, when the word is taught, in whatever form the word of God is taught, the power of God is present. The written word... Some of it was written 2,000 years ago. Some was written 4,000 years ago. But it still carries the same weight as the speaker when he was saying it. So you need not to have been present when it was said. Like what I'm teaching now, some people are going to listen to it 5 years from now, 20 years from now. At that time, the same power we have right now will still be available because it is incorruptible seed. It does not expire. It is eternal truth. It carries eternal power. It is eternally potent. Yeah. After this service, you can take the teaching to a hospital and put it in the ears of a sick person and it gets healed. It never expires. These are eternal truths. Eternal truths. Again, Anywhere words are put together and it is the word of God in any format, the power of God is accessible. And oftentimes we, we see more of this in special meetings. You know, somebody say, why is it that we see more of this when there's a special meeting? The reason is because when we announce a special meeting, you adjust your mind to expect. So don't wait until there is special meeting. Every time we're going to meet, expect to receive. And then every meeting will be a special meeting. <laughs> every meeting ought to be a special meeting. You know, some people, their minds, once they see billboards and they hear radio announcements and they see preparation, then they expect something to happen. It's a mind thing. And that's why we're teaching, so that every time you expect to be healed, every time you expect the power of God to move when we come together. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody said to me, what about, why, why is it that people in villages, if you take the gospel to people in villages, you see miracles, all kinds of miracles, because their minds have not been messed up. They have not read on the internet about fake miracles. They have not read on Facebook about, you know, some pastors that arrange miracles. They have not read any of those things. Their minds are fresh, innocent, and expecting that if you say God can do it, God will do it. So that's why it's easy for them to believe. But society has brought a lot of exposure. So because people have had all kinds of things, their minds have been subjected to all kinds of bombardment. So when you are bringing teaching of God's word to them, it takes them time to come out of the negativity to a place where they can believe to receive. Some never come out at all. That's why you've got to guard your heart. That's why you've got to guard your heart. People that are less educated get more miracles. Because they don't know anything. You are the one that is giving them grammar. You are the one doing analysis. Those people don't understand analysis. They just believe that if you say God can heal, then if he is God, he should be able to heal. So, I'm ready to receive. <laughs> I'm ready to receive. I'm not afraid. Do you say God? If he is God, let's do it. That's why you can pray over water and give them, they drink and they are healed. Because they believe that if it is God giving them water, it should clear their body. Am I teaching good? Yeah. That's why you can pray over handkerchiefs and send to them and they are healed. Because if it is coming from God, you see, 
They are not complicated. They are not complicated. And some of them, because they have been exposed to idol worship, they believe that if an idol says something, it will happen. So if somebody that is bigger than an idol is saying something, it should of necessity happen. And they may not even be born again. They don't have to be Christians. Because they believe that God will do it, God in his mercy reaches them at that point. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. Oh yes. So you must carry a consciousness to receive in every meeting and everywhere the word of God is taught. You can get healed even in morning devotion. As you gather together in the morning with your family because that's two or three. The power of God is there. It doesn't have to be special healing meeting. Any format where the word is taught and every gathering of believers, the power of God is present. Sometimes we think when there is a word of knowledge on a sickness, the person is automatically healed. But look at me everybody. Do you know that when there is a word of knowledge for a healing, it is not automatic that the person is healed. The word of knowledge means I have information about your condition. That's all. So I can have a word of knowledge about a condition that you're going through and you're not healed. Because the word of knowledge doesn't mean automatic healing. The word of knowledge only revealed a condition. Beyond the word of knowledge, you must believe to receive. So the word of knowledge does not stop you, does not exempt you from receiving and acting on the word of God. Neither does the word of wisdom or does the word of prophecy or any of the revelation gifts. They don't automatically translate into miracles. They only reveal the situation that we can join you in faith and believe for you to receive. Is it clear here? Yeah, so because some people believe that once you just say there's somebody here, blah 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 blah, the miracle is automatic. No, even when there's a revelation, you have to believe and you have to receive and you have to act on the word of God. Am I teaching good? So, a word of knowledge just means I got to know that you are sick, it doesn't mean you are healed. You still need to release your faith. The word of knowledge is not the power of God, but the word of knowledge is an avenue where the power of God can be received. When hands are laid and the recipient receives. So even the laying on of hands is not automatic. When we lay hands, you have to receive. In Mark chapter 6 verse 2 to 5, Jesus went to his hometown. He couldn't do mighty miracles. So it means that even in the height of unbelief, laying of hands could help to believe. Because Jesus laid hands on a few people. And they were healed in his hometown. <laughs> he discovered that speaking the word only will not do. These people are in the depth of unbelief. So let's help them to some level. So he laid hands on a few of them and they got healed. So laying of hands helps to release your faith to receive. So when people are struggling with a lot of doubt and unbelief, you may need to lay some hands on them. You pray over them. There are only two elements that makes it happen. The power of God and the faith of the believer. The power of God and the faith of the believer. The power of God present when the word is taught. Then the power of God is present when believers are gathered. Two things. Number one, the power of God is present when the word is taught. Number two, the power of God is present when believers are gathered. Am I teaching good? <clears throat> so faith can be found in anyone whether you are a Christian or not. Faith for healing can be found in everyone, whether you are a Christian or not. In John chapter 5, a man didn't know who Jesus was. And Jesus said, man, you are healed. In Acts chapter 3, we are not told if the man at the gate beautiful was a believer. But Peter said, the faith that is by him, has made him whole in the presence of you all. So whether hands are laid on or not, the vital elements to know is that wherever the word of God is, the power of God is. Or the power of God is where the word of God is taught. The power of God is when the word of God is taught. Number one, is where the word is taught. Number two, the power of God is when the word is taught. 
It is where the word is taught. It is when the word is taught. The power of God is in any way the word is taught. Once the word is taught, the power of God is there. Then the power of God is available when believers come together. Every activity of believers, when we come together, can produce healing. Every activity of believers, when we come together, can produce healing. Whether it is prayer, singing, you know, whether it is fellowshipping in the world, it will produce power. So you should learn to release your faith at every given opportunity. Amen. I said amen. The woman with the issue of blood, you know, Jesus didn't even know her. The Bible says he didn't know her. She came from behind and touched him and walked away. And he said, somebody touched me. He didn't say that woman touched because he didn't know who it was. You don't have, you, you don't have to be known by a minister of the gospel before you can receive. You can receive without his permission. A minister of the gospel doesn't have to give you permission to receive. As, as soon as he opens the word of God to teach, you have access by your faith to receive. Am I teaching good here? Yeah. <laughs> you don't need permission. You don't need to say, man of God, can you release some power to me? No. You take it. It's available to you. Stay in God's word even when the symptoms are high. Stay in God's word even when you use medication. Never let it be a time where you give up at all. Faith in God's word never gives up. You need to be rugged in believing and waver not. In Romans 4 17, Abraham called the things that be not as though they were hoping against hope. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. He was fully persuaded that faithful is he who promised who was able also to perform. Very outstanding of Abraham. We don't know for how long he called it, but he called it we have read of a woman 12 years. We have read of another person 18 years. We have read of another person crippled from birth. Yet they believed. And they were healed. You too can believe. It doesn't matter how long the condition has been there. You too can believe. Some healings happen immediately. Some other healings take time. Some take time. The fact that it's taking time doesn't mean God is not doing it. Some happen immediately, some take time. That's why Brother James used an illustration of the sheep and the horse. We put beads in horses' mouths to turn their body. Then the sheep, as big as it is, the steering turns it around. But you know that the sheep and the, and the, sheep and the horses, they are turning around, it's not the same. It's not the same. That's why Brother James used the two illustrations. It was intentional. When you are riding a horse, for those of you that have ridden on a horse before, I have a number of times. When you are riding on a horse, it doesn't matter how fast you are speeding with that horse. If you want the horse to stop, the beats are in the mouth of the horse. You pull the rope and the rope will put the beats and press down the tongue of the horse and the horse will stop. And then you can make a turn immediately. You can initiate an immediate turn. And you can go back from where you are coming without waste of time. Alright? Now, but when you are in a ship, you don't make that kind of turn. You don't make that kind of turn. In a ship, you can be initiating a turn for another 10 to 20 or 30 minutes. You are still initiating because of the, the body, the size. And it will have to take its time and make the turn. But, if, but surely, once you initiate it, you gradually go, it will be making a turn until it turns. So if a horse was coming and a sheep was coming, and both of them decides to make the turn, at the time the sheep is initiating the turn, the horse has gone. So that is how the power of God operates. There are some people, the power of God hits them, they can make a turn immediately and receive a miracle. Others, it will initiate and take time, but it will eventually make the turn. That's why James used the two illustrations. 
to show you some healings are instant and some takes time. But both of them, it is still the power of God at work. The power of God is working in my body. The power of God is working in my body. I thought somebody would say that. The power of God is working in my body right now. I didn't hear a powerful amen. In Matthew chapter 17, we have the account of a man who brought his child and they could not heal him. Now, let's quickly examine something. What about people who are not physically here? You can also believe for people that are not here to be healed. You can believe for your loved ones. You can believe for your family. You can believe for a friend. You can believe for healing for a neighbor. In Matthew 8, we have two instances of relationship. Before that, we have the leper who came to Jesus. Then we have the centurion who said, my servant lieth at home sick. So he believed for his servant. Then Peter's mother-in-law, which means it's possible to believe and receive healing on behalf of people. We have the Matthew 17 account. I brought my child to your disciples to heal him. They could not heal him. Then we have Matthew 15, the Syrophoenician woman. My child is sick. Jesus said we cannot give the children's bread to dogs. So we have people who were relatives, children, someone's staff. They got healed because people believed for them. People believed on their behalf. My servant is at home grievously tormented. Jesus said I will come and heal him. Luke chapter 15, I mean chapter 5, where a group of friends believed for their friend and went and carried him and brought him and he got healed. Remember what Luke said, Jesus saw their faith. Faith is tangible, faith is definitive. You can have people who believe together with you. And let me tell you this, always make sure that you surround yourself with people who are believers. Always ensure that you surround yourself with people who do the word. People who believe the word of God and they do the word. It's very easy to function with such people. Because what comes out of their mouth generates the power of God. They are never in unbelief. They are people who do the word. Build a company of word doers. And build a company of word believers around you. Learn to always know and to believe together with people who believe. Always release your faith in the direction where the need is. So, some things to take home. Number one, believe the word of God. Believe the word of God irrespective of the circumstances. Number two, believe that where the word is, the power is. Number three, believe that every form, anywhere and everywhere the word of God is taught, the power of God is there. Number four, you can stand in faith with a friend or a brother and believe for their healing. You know, we cannot trust the wisdom of men at the detriment of God's power. So don't let the doctor's report mess you up completely. Release your faith in what you believe. Release your faith in what you believe and release your faith for what you believe. Release your faith in what you believe and release your faith for what you believe. Next one, when believers come together, God's power is available. Even when we gather to pray, the power of God is available. Prayer makes power available, dynamic in his workings. 
Oh yes, you can stand in faith for a friend, a colleague or others. And when we pray for those people who we love, who are not where we are, we start praising God for their healing. Thank you, Father, for the healing of that man. Thank you, Father, for the healing of that lady. You stay in faith and keep believing and keep speaking and keep calling and keep declaring there's no distance in the spirit. And it will be long. It will be long. It will be long. Dr. Paul Young Cho told the story of a place he went to preach the gospel. And then one of those nights, as he was praying for that community, he was before the Lord in prayer through the night. Through that night. And, and while he was before the Lord in prayer, a lady who is the daughter of the community leader, the chief of that community, has been crippled. Either crippled or critically sick. One of the, I can't, I can't recall the details, but there was a condition with that family that was critical. And Dr. Paul Yungicho said he just prayed through the night and he kept feeling a burden. So he kept praying. He prayed, he prayed until he got a release. And by the time he got a release, it was about 5 a.m. So the, the village head came with the daughter and knocked Dr. Cho's door. Because the daughter suddenly got healed towards the early hours of that morning, stood up and began to move where she couldn't move before. And walked to her father's room and told her father, the missionary who came to this village came to my room around 2 a.m. and prayed for me. He just left. He just left. <laughs> Why did you let him go? Before I could call him, he left. She didn't know that she was in a vision. She thought that Dr. Cho physically came to her room to pray. And it was so real because he prayed for her and commanded her to walk. Meanwhile, Dr. Cho was only praying in tongues because he didn't know what the burden was. But as he was praying in tongues, he translated in those tongues into a vision and came to her room and ministered practically to her till she got healed. Then he walked out of her room and she told her father so they now came to dr cho's abode where he was staying knocked the door he opened the door and the villager said thank you for coming to pray for my daughter she is now well so cho said he said me when <laughs> when when did i come to your house so the daughter narrated the experience so Cho said, oh, from two o'clock, I felt a body and I began to pray until a few minutes ago, I stopped the prayer because I had a release. Then Cho began to explain that sometimes God could put on you a body to pray for somebody that is going through crisis at a particular time. And while you are praying, the power of God has no distance. The person could see you in a trance or he may not even see you, but the power of God will do the job. And when the job is done, you will have a release. But sometimes believers are lazy. They are lazy. You wake up in the midnight, suddenly all the sleep in your eye has disappeared. God is telling you to pray. At a time you shouldn't be awake, you are awake and your eyes are clear and you are wondering what to do, I got Batoka. Why are you wondering what to do? Begin to pray. Somebody needs your prayer at that time. Because prayer is a ministry. We minister to the saints. Epaphras, who labored fervently. A minister, he labored fervently in prayers. So prayer is a ministry to the saints. Prayer is a ministry to the saints. We minister to the needs of the saints when we pray. Especially when we pray in the spirit. Praise God. Praying in the spirit. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Praying always with all prayer and supplication where? In the spirit. So we keep thanking God. Faith can be a fight sometimes. It can be a fight. So you never give up. And that is where you need to apply the audacity of faith. I believe God. I believe what God said. I'm taking, I'm not taking a no for an answer. You stay in faith. You prevail in faith. I refuse to take a no for an answer until you see that situation resolved. Praise God. 
I say, praise God. The power of God is, is at work in my body. The power of God is at work in my circumstances. Amen. Say with me, the power of God is at work in my circumstances right now. Say it again, the power of God is at work in my circumstances right now. Say it again, the power of God is at work in my body right now. Say it again, the power of God is at work in my organs right now. Say it again, the power of God is at work in my situation right now. I didn't hear powerful, amen. The power of God is at work. The power of God is at work. I've just taught the word of God. The healing power is here. Power for miracles is here. All you need to do is release your faith and take delivery of what is yours. Stand on your feet. That's all I've got for you tonight. Glory to God. The power of God is at work in my members, in my organs, in my body right now. Praise God. The power of God is at work in this place. There's no distance in the realm of the spirit. Wherever the people are right now, you're hearing the sound of my voice on radio, you're watching on, on social media, you're watching on television, right where you are, the power of God is at work there right now. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. The power of God is at work in my body, in my members, in my organs right now. The power of God is at work. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man make a tremendous power available that is dynamic in his workings. Let's pray right now and declare anyone sick connected to this service wherever they are around the world. We declare the healing power of God. We command their bodies discharged from every pain, from every infirmity, from every disease, from every frailty, from every weakness, from every oppression of the enemy. Like Koska Tabalanda Kota Nakea the power of God is at work in your members, in your organs in your sight, in your hearing in your bones the power of God is at work right now get me the microphone I need Dr. Gabriel to pray for the sick again tonight Nakata, 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 Agabajo, Kalanama, Korotosa, Kalanege, Henge, Boza, Kalanamanga, Hegelere Bobo, Shakale, Namama. Circumstances and situations begin to receive a miracle for your circumstances, for your situation, for your job, for your marriage, for your career. Begin to receive a miracle. The power is here right now. Release your faith and receive, 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 receive. Lakota go shakata ma nakarataka systems are shaking, situations are shaking, situations are organizing themselves, circumstances are working in your favor, they are working in your favor, circumstances are arranging and rearranging themselves to accommodate your desire. Lakosa maraka takere nakala nakara. Whatever area of your life you need a miracle, lekosuma karanako kaladaba. We speak miracles miracles, signs, wonders over your circumstances, over your situations right now and we declare supernatural intervention right now the power of God is at work at work in your circumstances at work in your situations Leko Suta you shall have what you say. You shall have what you say. Say the power of God is at work in my body. Touch that part of your body where there's a sickness and declare God's power is at work in that organ, at work in that part of your body. God's power is at work right now. I need a microphone quickly for Dr. Gabriel. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Father. Agazo Belenege. Azabo Lokatana. Engelen Emosha. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Look at me, everybody. Thank you, Lord. Miracles are happening all over the place right now. Miracles are happening all over the place right now. As I speak right now, God's power is at work where you are over your situation over your circumstance yes over that circumstance get rid of fear yeah you 
I'm speaking to a particular man looking at, looking at the screen right now. You get rid of fear. Fear has been the obstacle that has kept you from experiencing the miracle power of God in your life. So get rid of fear and believe the word of God. Get rid of fear and believe the word of God. Years ago I used to say, doubt your doubts but believe the word of God. Get rid of fear right now. Fear will paralyze faith and fear will dampen your environment to receive. Get rid of fear. Fear doesn't come from God. Fear renders you incompetent, in, incapable of receiving. So get rid of it now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The power of God is at work in your body and at work in your situation. I believe, God, that miracles are going to break forth in your circumstances, your jobs, your situation, in your career. And I'm going to pray that prayer in a few minutes, but I want Dr. Gabriel to come and pray for the sick. If you're still feeling a pain or a hangover anywhere around your body, this is the final prayer that discharges every oppression of the enemy. And get ready to re receive your miracle now and do what you couldn't do before because God's power is right where you are. Praise God. Dr. Gabriel, just come over The power of God is hitting that body right now. Tremors have been healed right in now. The name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And we declare right now that paralysis, paralysis have been healed. They have been healed right now. In the name they have been healed right now. In the name of Jesus. Hemiplegia is being healed right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Kaba sombra la takayada. We declare that organ malfunctions, yes. kidney diseases have been healed right now. In the name of Jesus. Nephritis are healed by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Infections are healed right now. Yes, yes. Every reproductive abnormality, infection, impediment. Ovarian blockage. We command be upon in the name, in of, the name of Jesus. Amen. We release power into that body right now, oh, la, la, la. and we declare fruitfulness. The body comes alive in the name of Jesus. Amen. We cause cancer to die in the name and of to Jesus. pass out of that body. Zakotaba. We command the cells Zakotaba. to die. We declare you go no further. You are terminated. Terminated. Yes. Terminated. Yes. Out in the name of Jesus. Amen. We declare that blood is cleansed right now. Jaquato Basotaga. Manato Even that organization, that flow in the legs like pins, pain sensations, every move of darkness, in the name of that Jesus. congestion of the heart and of the chest. Right now, we lose that chest right now. The power of God hits that body. That chest will lose in, in the, the name, name of, Jesus. of Jesus. You are free right now. Begin to breathe freely. Breathe freely. Breathe freely. Yes, yes. Your lungs begin to open up. In the, in name, the of name of Jesus. In the name of Thank you, Father. Now begin to do what you couldn't do before. God's power is at work in your body right now. And we rebuke sickness. We rebuke circumstances. We rebuke situations where you need a miracle on your job, in your career. Where you need a miracle on your papers, on your jobs. In the name of Jesus, I command the devil, get your hands off of God's property. Get your hands off in the name of Jesus. Now receive a miracle. A miracle on your job, a miracle on your business, a miracle in your career, a miracle in the work of your hands. You receive a miracle. Those papers are signed. That check is signed. You receive it in the name of Jesus. A miracle of provision. A miracle of provision. A miracle of favor. A miracle of relationship. Receive in the name of Jesus. Nakota Dada. De grow the sucker. De grow the sucker. Yes, 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 yes. O lata. 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 You receive in the name of Jesus. Praise you, Father. It is done. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. It is done. Get ready for miracle calls, miracle mails, miracle favors. Just get ready for all of it. It's yours right now. Praise you, Father. Lift your hands and let's give God praise in this place. Praise you, Father. 
Praise you, Father. I tell you, it's harvest of miracles, healing, signs, wonders all over the world. Praise you, Father. Glory to God. 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 Glory. Amen. Oh, I tell you. Now listen carefully. Tomorrow, tomorrow is special because I will be joining Mr. Michael Bush tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. for two hours to respond to your calls, answer your phone calls from all over the world, respond to all your emails, the questions you have written, listen to all your testimonies. It's going to be an explosive time tomorrow, 6 p.m. GMT plus 1 till 8 o'clock. GMT plus 1. Then tomorrow at 4 p.m., 4 p.m., GMT plus 1, at 4 p.m. tomorrow, I'll be ministering to the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship in Ghana, and we'll be streaming them live, both on our Facebook and YouTube, and on their own Facebook page. So, you don't want to miss that, because it's going to be very special. We're going to be talking about the possibility of God's mission. The mission is possible. It's going to be a powerful one tomorrow at 4 and on Sunday at 4 again, I will still be ministering to the full gospel people at 4 p.m. GMT plus 1. But of course, our usual Sunday morning services, first service at 8 a.m. GMT plus 1 and 11 a.m. GMT plus 1. But don't forget, I'll be joining Mr. Michael Bush in a few minutes so we can answer your questions and respond to all the issues you have raised. But tomorrow will be special at 6 p.m. GMT plus 1. You want to invite more people to be part of all that we'll be doing tomorrow and you want to get your phones loaded and ready to share with us the testimonies of what God has done in your life in the last one week and in the last few weeks since we began to talk about the miraculous. But I want to take up your offerings right now wherever you're watching around the world on, on social media, on television and I want to thank all the partners who keep giving to support this ministry. Your givings enable us to do the things we do around the world. Radio audience, Mr. Michael Bush will read the banking details for you before, before we even start at the council. So you, you want to give your offerings and send them in so together we can responsibly see to it that the vision of getting this gospel to the ends of the earth is carried out. I want you to know we love you, we thank you all the time. And those of you who are, who are, who are new to the platform, who want to be partners, you want to support this ministry every month with a particular part of your income, you want to partner with us, all you need to do is send a mail to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com and we will send you a partnership later that has all the information on what you are expected to do as you partner with us. But I want you to know we are really appreciative of all you do to help us get this gospel around the world. Praise God. I'll be joining Mr. Michael Bush after this prayer. So lift up your offerings. Let's pray together as we offer. Father, we thank you for the privilege to give. We give in faith. We give with joy. Our offerings are a sweet smell before you today. And as we give, we rejoice that through our givings, the gospel continues to permeate and penetrate the ends of the earth. Lives are rich. Disciples are equipped. Believers are raised. Ministers are being trained all over the world to preach the gospel of Christ all over the nations of the earth. And we declare that everyone giving, your needs are met supernaturally according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Thank you, Father, for testimonies, material testimonies and testimonies of provision. In Jesus' precious name, and every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Praise God. Remember tomorrow, 4 p.m., I'm live, and 6 p.m., I'm live on all platforms. You don't want to miss what God is doing here. And I'm joining Mr. Michael Bush right now. And until I see you at the other studio, we love you. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Let's celebrate viewers around the world for being a part of this service tonight. Glory! Amen! Woo! I'm excited tonight. Hallelujah. This message. For these, all the messages and books by Dr. Abel Damino, please call plus 234-806-800-9939 or email powercityoffice at gmail.com. It is the will of God that we should be in good health always and be healed of every infirmity. If you don't need healing, someone around you definitely might need it. This is your opportunity and for those sick around you to be connected to the teaching of God's word for healing. Don't forget 
God's words. I prophesy as your amen will come like thunder, you will swim in the miraculous. Power City International presents Harvest of Healing, Miracles, Signs and Wonders, ministering Dr. Abel Daminer. Date 11th April to 18th April 2021. Time Monday to Saturday, 6 p.m. daily, and on Sunday, first service 8 a.m. and second service 11 a.m. GMT plus one, and a rebroadcast on the following radio stations. Radio Aquaibom 90.5 FM Uyo 11 AM to 1 PM XL FM 106.9 Uyo 1 PM to 3 PM daily Unio FM 100.7 Uyo 3 PM to 5 PM Comfort FM 95.1 Uyo 6 PM to 8 PM Inspiration FM 105.9 Uyo 9 PM to 10 PM Heritage Radio 104.9 Uyo, 10 p.m. till midnight daily and also on Kingdom Life Network Station. Also live on Facebook at Abel Damino Public Figure, YouTube Abel Damino Ministries International, Twitter Abel Damino and Instagram at Abel Damino. Watch real time. Venue Power City International, number 98 Wangibo Road, Uyo, Akwaibom State, Nigeria. Host Doctors Abel and Rachel Daminer. for staying tuned to this point of the program. It's Ask the Counselor now, and my name is Michael Bush. Okay, bank details, especially for our radio audience, you have free bank accounts. Power City is the name of all free. I start um, on this edition with FCMB 2982 that's FCMB, Power City International. Zenith is number two, 10, 12, 36, 59, 12, 10, 12, 36, 59, 12. That's for Zenith. And Power City International remains the account name, just as it is for UBA, 139, 26, 465, 139, 26, 465. For sponsorship, you just need to quickly call us up on plus two, three, four, eight, oh, three, two, seven, five, six, one. Or you email Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. Dr. There, of course, is DR. Okay. So, in another 10 seconds, we should actually get the program underway, just as I announced, with pride and privilege and humility and honor the arrival of Global Baba in this uh, part of the program. Global Baba is a prolific author, he's uh, written 32 books and counting. He's an uh, international televangelist. He's everywhere on radio, he's on TV, he's on the social media. And I'm so privileged and honored to have this teacher of the world, Dr. Abel Damina. The Intercontinental, Mr. Bush. So good to have you around today. Global Baba, so, so nice to have what you. What a day, man. Global Baba, you just would do our opening prayer so that we can get on the way. Straight ahead. Father, we rejoice that the gospel is thriving around the nations of the earth. Laborers have been raised all over the Blue Marble planet, men and women equipped with sound doctrine to make known the fragrance of Jesus' grace. We thank you that our societies are opening up to the truth of the gospel. Men and women, an army of people are moving into the light. We pray for our governor, we pray for our, our executive cabinet in the state here. Thank you that you are working through them to create an enablement, an environment of peace for the gospel to keep advancing. We pray for our world that the name of Jesus is finding expression in every community, every nation, every state, and every continent. And we rejoice that the gospel shines and the darkness has nowhere to hide. So we give you praise for massive salvation of souls. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Kelvin starts from there. Kelvin writing from Cameron says, thank you so much, Global Baba, for the wisdom 
in God's word unleashed to us every day. In 2 Peter 2.20, who was he referring to? If these were sinners, is it possible for a sinner to have a pyknosis? Considering that was the word he used there for knowledge. In 2 Thessalonians 2.3, is the falling away referred to here as apostasy? What are the consequences of apostasy? I remember having listened to a satirical episode in which you mentioned one of the churches John talked about in the book of Revelation as those who had uh, resorted to apostasy. What becomes of them? Also, in 1 Timothy 4.1, now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Is departing from the faith losing your salvation? And finally, Mark 13.13, 13, and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Please kindly throw more light on these verses. Thank you. Well, again, uh, the first scripture he didn't quote, I would like us to start from the, the Peter, so yes. they can put it on the screen. In 2 Peter 2.20. 2 Peter 2.20, dog going back to his vomit. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. Next verse. But it is happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the soul that was washed to her wallowing in the time, in so, the mire. So now it's easy because it's, he tells you the dog has gone back to his vomit. So that means before the knowledge came, the person was a dog. After the knowledge came, the person was still a dog. And after the person has gotten knowledge as a dog, the person went back to his vomit. It means the person was never born again. So that scripture is not for believers. That scripture is for people who come among us and act like us, but they are not born again. They are called false brethren or false converts. Now, the apostasy in the book of Revelation, if you observe, he was talking to individuals and he was talking to the churches. He wrote letters to the churches, to the church in this, to the church in that. Then for believers, he said to him that overcome it. So he was talking to two classes of people. The apostasy was the churches. The, the churches and the leadership of those churches allow for wrong doctrine to be preached in those churches. And those wrong doctrines being preached in those churches, you know, uh, misled people from the truth of the gospel. And he said the judgment for them, he was going to take away the candle, their candlestick. That is, he was going to shut down. And most of those churches were extinguished. They never lasted. They never had a legacy. That's what happens to any ministry that compromises the preaching of the gospel. The only gospel that will stand the test of time is the gospel of Christ. So if a man of God is not preaching the right gospel, his ministry will not last. The legacy of his ministry will expire in a short while because such messages don't have longevity. They don't last. The only gospel that lasts is the gospel of Christ. It is settled forever. So such ministries don't last. Now, when the Bible talks about falling away, it was actually talking about people who have had the gospel, believed the gospel, and then got into mixture. The kind of people that Brother Paul will speak to in Galatia and call them foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you. Having received the gospel by faith, why are you now going back to be perfected in the flesh? That's what he's talking about. Such people don't lose their salvation, but such people also don't walk in the reality of what they have in Christ for the rest of their lives. And of course, they never get the reward for their ministry, they never get reward for service, they never get reward for preaching those useless gospel that they preach that is not centered on the person of Christ. Okay, Lubaba, how are you able to pick and align these questions that I ask you? For instance, it's just a battery of questions, about four questions in one, and without writing anything, without taking any notes, how are you able to answer them one by one? Because when I was listening to them, I knew that they were all dealing with falling away, apostasy, and all of that. So it's easy for me, having interpreted the first one, which was a bit different. The rest were lumped together as one question. Okay, so global power is not as if... I've asked this question before, but I still need to ask because I don't know whether things have changed. Yes. It's not as if you are asking, you, you're being asked a question and you're answering. And you have, um, because some prophets used to tell us that there will be a screen 
So something would appear and you are seeing it written for you there. No, those prophets are... And, uh, so you don't see a screen? Those prophets are wonderful. Okay. I don't see screen. Okay, you don't see screen. <laughs> what do you my see? My screen is in my mind. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay, so still from Cameroon. Oh, oh, oh. That's a caller. For okay. Uh, <laughs> a caller, a uh, producer would like us to take a first call at this point of the program. Hello. Hello. Man, yes, many thanks for joining us. Yes, go ahead. Yes. Go ahead, Daniel. Uh, I want to ask a question. Of course. Go ahead. Uh, please, I want him to explain Hebrew chapter 9, verse 10 for me. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 10. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15. Verse 10. 10. Or Hebrews 9, 10. Put it off for us. What's, yes. the, what's the question? What, what's what the do you question? want him to explain? Okay, sure. So we can still go there, Hebrews, Hebrews 9, 10. Which stood only in meats and drinks and diverse uh, washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. It's talking about practices in the Old Testament that foreshadowed Christ. It was put on them until, so it was for a period of time. The reformation was actually the coming of Christ. So those practices of washing of feet, water baptism, eating bread and ribena, all of them we are until the coming of Christ, who is the substance that those things foreshadowed. That's just what the writer of Hebrews was explaining to the believing Jews, non-believing Jews, and will be believing Jews to abandon those things so they can embrace the reality that is in Christ. Okay, so Global Baba, um, you woke up um, during or about the time of Sutera 7 yes. to have um, asked the counselor to have, what was it before? It was a question and answer segment. Yes. You know, so do you think you missed something? Would you have rather you started right from Sutera 1? Or you were not ready then for this? Well, I wasn't ready and I, I didn't receive instructions for it as a then. Uh -huh. So... Timing is everything, everything. also. So you so received instructions. The timing was right. You received we, instructions yes, from? From the Lord. Oh, okay. The Lord spoke to me. Global Baba. Bam. And we and got into it. Another question. Another and then call. he prepared you too. Absolutely. And brought us and it's happening. And uh, the unreturnable call. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh no, Global Baba. There's another caller. Hello. Hello, good evening. Many thanks for joining us. Where you calling from? My name is Brown. Call it from Uyo. Brown, take it up. Please, I, before I ask my question, I want to take this time to appreciate you, Papa. Thank you. You have been an amazing teacher. And ever since I've been listening to you, my Christian life has been catapulted to the next level. Praise God. I want to say thank you. Thank you. All right, sir, please. I want you to throw more light on God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Because the reason why I ask so, sometimes our preachers preach in a, in a sense that the Old Testament was the regime of God the Father. Then the fourth gospel is a, it was the regime of God the Son. And now is the regime of God, of Holy Spirit. And they quoted all manners of things that in the regime of God, of Holy Spirit, that is also a time of vengeance. And that's so please, I just want to know, if, are there three personalities or they are one? Please, thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Brown. I am my father, I one, John 10, 30. There are not three personalities. You know, it's one God. Now, the concept of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost is a concept of redemption. Redemption. God himself cannot be killed, cannot die. Man has sinned, man must die. So, in order for man to be free, the sinless must help the sinner. Man is not sinless. Man must die. The only sinless person is God. It is appointed unto men once to die. So, man has an appointment to die eternally. So what happens? God loves man. So God became a man in the person of Jesus to die so that he can pay for man and free man. And then when he rose from the dead, a man cannot live in a man. So he became the Holy Ghost to live in you and make the reality of what he has obtained in his resurrection take effect on your inside. That's what the concept is. 
Okay, so Global Baba. Yes. As we sit here now listening to you, we can also become like you in future? Already you are becoming. How? <laughs> By learning. No, but when you give some of these uh, explanations, I even get lost more. <laughs> It's just a period. After a while. Okay. After a while. Do I have to fast and pray for that one? You are a prophet already. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's make progress even as we still stay on in Cameroon. Greetings, Dr. Abel Damina, my global barber. It is with great pleasure that I write to you. Having come to know you and your Christocentric teaching has been a blessing to me. I write from the Republic of Cameroon to appeal to come to Power City International Headquarters in Nigeria to be fathered and mentored by you, just like Paul fathered and mentored Timothy in the doctrine of Christ. Upon salvation, I've had a compelling desire to preach the gospel worldwide. I've come to know the responsibility I have in preaching the gospel as far as the earth is concerned. Our vision, mission, and mandate statements. My vision statement, Global Baba, is to spread the everlasting gospel. Re Revelation 14, 6 to 7, my mission statement is to reveal Christ. That is in Colossians 1.27, and my mandate statement is to raise disciples, Matthew 28.18-20. to 20. I need a sound mentor like you, Global Barber, so I'm writing to ask if I should come over to Nigeria from Cameroon, and if you would take me as your Timothy to raise me for the work of the ministry. I'm hoping to hear from you, thanks. Global Barber, the only minus to this piece, to this entry, is the fact that how do you write such a, such a profound entry without your name? Yeah. He left out his name. Yeah, what we'll do is our office will email him mm. and get all his details and work out details. We would love to, we would love to t teach you, train you, equip you. That's part of what we are here for, you know. But our office will reach out to you and see if they're able to work out something with you, you know. And then you can come stay here for one year, two years. There was a woman that came from Cameroon and stayed here for three years. Wow, three full years on her own and was mm. just coming to church to learn. Another woman came from uh, from I think France. Wow. She even came with her white friend who came and stayed there for one month. And then she stayed there for like three, four years. And I, she's in Nigeria now. She has relocated because of this gospel. And there are people like that. So you can come. Come learn. Our last caller for now. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Evening. Bless you. My, my name is Abdul. I'm coming from Nigeria. Abdul. Okay, Abdul. Yes. Uh, Papa, I wanted to, I wanted to ask some questions for some of you that are, uh, uh, COVID-19 vaccination, which is, is actually safe for the new to, to go ahead and take the vaccine. And it's a, it's a performance, uh, 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 it's only 10, and it's the same aspect of it that is not going to be for the new vaccine, so I can know. Because okay. people are saying that the new vaccine is, is okay. a randomized, uh, Okay, okay, Abdul, thank you. COVID-19. The vaccine, take it if you find it. And if you find, bring for me, I will take two. Global Barber. There's nothing wrong with it. Especially don't, don't the be, ministry. Don't, the, yeah. the health ministry says so. Yes, once the health ministry mm. says so, go, go for it. I mean, if your federal ministry of health says it's okay, go for it. So all this talk of it being antichrist, satanic. No, 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 no. All that is just, is just, it's not Bible. Those are conspiracy theories. They have mm. no place in the Bible. Okay. No, Baba, from Cameroon, let's get to Malawi. My name is Blessings Gwedesa from Malawi. My question is, is it possible to always do the right thing? How possible is this? I need your prayers. Always possible to do the right thing if you stay in the word of God. The word of God will build you up and bring you to that place. You grow into it. But you need teaching. You need sound teaching. You need to, to be equipped. You need to be taught the word. So as you keep following, you will keep growing and growing and growing where you will now walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, where you're fruitful unto every good work. It's a prayer for the believer in the epistles. From Malawi now to Lesotho. Hello, Global Baba and Mr. Intercontinental Michael Bush. I'm Ledoko Motebe in Lesotho. I recently asked Global Baba for clarity on two phrases, uh, kingdom of heaven and kingdom of God. You answered me very well that they are the same, only that they can be used interchangeably. Thank you, Global Baba, sir. Today, I want to know what exactly is the kingdom, of, uh, the kingdom that Jesus used to speak about in the Bible. I read about him likening to various things in his parables. The Bible also in Matthew 4.33 tells us that Jesus was preaching the gospel of the kingdom. I also read that John the Baptist was the greatest of all born of a woman, but the least in the kingdom is greater than John. 
This emphasizes that John wasn't in the kingdom because the least in the kingdom is greater than him. Therefore, Global Baba, I want to know what exactly is the kingdom of God and who are in it or who and who qualify to be in it. May you please also explain this verse to me, Matthew 16, 28. As shortly I say to you, there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Let it go from Leseto. Wow, that's some intelligent Bible Absolutely. study you did there. Mm. I'm really excited and I'm glad to answer your questions. All right, so the kingdom of God that Jesus referred to was himself. He was the reality of the kingdom. So when he says the kingdom of God is likened unto, it was his way of telling them that the kingdom of God you're looking for is already here among you. All that he kept saying was referring to him. Jesus is the reality of God's kingdom. And when he says some will not taste death until they see the kingdom, he was saying some of you here will not die until you. It dawns on you that the kingdom is already among you. Remember, Jesus said, if I, by the finger of God, cast out demons, then the kingdom is among you. Then Jesus said, the kingdom does not come by observation, but the kingdom is within you. Now, after Jesus died and rose, the book of Romans says, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. And Jesus is made unto us righteousness, sanctification. So Jesus is the reality of that kingdom. Why wasn't John the Baptist? A part of it. Why is the least greater than John? The Old Testament prophet said, Thus say of the Lord. John the Baptist became the greatest among them because John said, Behold the Lamb of God. But the least in the kingdom, Christ lives in you. So because he lives in you, that's why you're greater than the prophets of the Old Testament. So today, Christ in the heart of a man is the reality of God's kingdom in that man. Okay, Global Baba. Global Baba is not, um, I, I think, uh, months after we started what we're doing now. Yes. It's the first time I've heard you commend someone openly for asking questions. So perhaps that commendation has forced the guy in Lesotho to ask more questions. You know, the, the, the reason is because we are reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John within two weeks. Mm. And all those questions are from Matthew, Mark. Actually. So the person must have been reading. Really? That's why I'm know. putting the comment. Absolutely. Yes. Okay, so he continues. It's still another entry from him. That's um, Leloko Motebe in uh, Leseto. Hello, Global Baba. May I ask for explanation of these scriptures and parables? Matthew 24, 13. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. Many are called, and a few are chosen. The parable of the wise and foolish virgins in Matthew 25. And lastly, the parable of the faithful servant and the evil servant, especially the part where he speaks about the evil servant from verses 48 to 51. Who does an evil servant represent, Global Baba? Matthew 24, 48 to 51. But if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying, is coming and begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunkards, the master of that servant will come on a day when he's not looking for him and at an hour that he's not aware of and will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Thank you, Global Baba. All right, so all of these are parables. We'll go over them one by one. one. Uh, oh, the, the do we have the time? Sharp, sharp, sharp. Okay. Now, so remember, a parable is, is, is a, a, a mode of communication. It's, it's, it has a fact. It has a fiction in it. The only thing you're looking for is the lesson in every parable. Parables are not literal, so don't take them literal. After reading through, you look for the lesson in them. So the first one. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. Endure to the end, there are talks of persecution. He that endures persecution, okay? Because you shall be hated, you shall be, you know, persecuted for my name's sake. He that endures persecution in the work of ministry. That's what he's talking about. Many are called, but a few are chosen. All right, so what Jesus was saying is, I have come, I'm available to many, but only a few of you have understood that I have come and have responded to my coming. The parable of the wise and foolish virgins in Matthew 24. Wise and foolish virgins were the Jewish people. I came among you whom you've been looking for. Only the wise ones among you know I have come. The foolish ones are among you are not even aware that I have come. Okay, down the parable of the faithful servant and the evil servant. He wants to know who is the evil servant. The evil servant is the person who knows he has come but has rejected and has refused to identify with him. Okay. It's still about himself. All Global. parables are centered on Christ. Right. Okay. Global, let's make... Um, progress let's go let's go straight from Lesotho now to South Africa hello global baba and Mr Bush my name is Simon Seret Semoyima I write from Limpopo at Modimole in South Africa today I don't have questions global baba I notice that as I follow your teachings I answer all the questions I have that I want to announce that my prayer life especially praying in the spirit has really improved 
I suspect it's an impartation from listening to your teachings and listening to your service when you were praying in the spirit. I appreciate your labor, Daddy, and Mr. Bush for the great work you both do. I love you both in Jesus' name. Simon. Wonderful testimony. Praise God. Nice to hear from you. Okay, let's take some anonymous entries now in Matthew 16, 26. Not anonymous entries, just anonymous location, but I guess this is Ghana. He doesn't tell us. His name is Nat Mensa. It says in Matthew 16, 26, for what profit is it to a, to a man, some translation, if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul, or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? My question is that B, as shortly I say to you, there are some standing here who shall not test death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Who is Jesus referring to here? Himself. We already answered that. Himself. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay, so we go to out of Africa now, straight to Europe, Germany. And uh, this is from Brother Jeffrey Azuma. Tayento, uh, he's just going to tell us that he is writing from Berlin, Germany. I remember reading stuff from him. And he says, I want to appreciate you, Global Baba, for the light God has used you to, to bring to me through your teachings. I've been following you, and I'm so, so grateful. And goes ahead. I think he's ordered for some books. He has dropped his uh, address that he wants those books um, wired to address to. I would give that to the producer in the course of the program. But from Germany, let's go quickly, quickly. I think this is to London now. Um, hello, Dr. Damina. My name is Michelle. I've been watching your broadcast for about a month now. I've been tremendously blessed and edified so much in the one month, more than I have been in my entire Christian life. I would like you to agree with me for a supernatural restoration miracle in my daughter, Gabriela. She's 16 and she's missing two permanent teeth. And I'm going tomorrow for consultation with a prostodontic dentist. I believe God, my Abba Father, is the maker of our bodies and is a miracle-working God. Please join your faith with mine, and I hope to be writing you very soon to share my testimony of healing with you. Thank you, and may God bless you, Michelle. Father, we pray for Michelle's daughter, Gabriela. We decree a miracle, a miracle on her dental system right now. Receive a miracle in Jesus' name. Amen. Global Baba from uh, England. Let's go straight to Spain, still in Europe. Hello, Global Baba and Mr. Bush. It has been a privilege to stumble on your teachings. Thank you so much. My name is Ifi. I currently reside in Spain. For about two years now, I've been having issues with my Spanish documents. I'm believing God that before the end of this year, it will be sorted out. Please, I want you to say a word of prayer for me concerning this issue. God bless you for your teachings. Amen. Father, we stand in faith with her and all others on the platform that are believing you for papers for a miracle. Receive a miracle. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, Global Baba, we leave uh, Europe now, and we head to the Americas. Canada, here we come. Global Baba, my name is Ivode. I write from Montreal, Canada. I'd like to thank you. Your teachings have changed my life completely. I love you so much. And I bought your book, Life Before the Cross and Life After the Cross. I've read where you said that before the cross, people went to the temple to pray, but now after the cross... We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. But even now, we still go to church. My question, therefore, do we have two churches or just one church, our body? Another question. I can't find the preaching of Soteria Season 6, Part 9 on YouTube. Can you please help me find it? All right. Well, remember, we have the universal church and we have the local church. The universal church, um, I have a full teaching on ecclesiology. The local church, you can order for it. But the universal church is the body of all those who believe in Christ worldwide together. While the local church is the assemblage of believers within a locality for the purpose of teaching, training, discipleship, and the advancement of the gospel of Christ through evangelism. Okay, Global Papa, still staying on in Canada, I have another interesting entry. It says, hello, Dr. Damina and Mr. Michael Bush. I live in Canada. I've been listening to you every Sunday for about three to four months now. I really enjoy the teachings. I have a question for my mother about marriage. My father, Global Baba, died 19 years ago, and my mother got married again 12 years after in 2014 to a pastor. But since then, her life has been hell. Our lives have also been worse. The only good thing, Global Baba, is that we came to Canada. Even so, it has been a uh, fight every single day. Um, for my sister and me and my stepfather and his children, life has just been complicated. They are always uh, disputing about everything. They insult themselves. It has become a real emotional abuse, Global Baba, every day. 
I decided to leave the house with my sister in 2018. In 2019, my mom decided to move in with us. My stepfather called me and asked me to talk to her because a Christian cannot get divorced. I talked with her, and after that, she changed her mind. They decided to talk, and I thought it would get better, but no, my mom is getting sick because of that. She can't sleep anymore. He would call her all sorts of names. He would disgrace her in front of his children. He would say to people that she's into adultery. He would um, even disgrace her everywhere, saying she's not a Christian. She's, she's prayed, or she prayed that God would change him, but it's not working. She started praying that God gives her the strength to live on with him. But I'm afraid for her and her baby because they have a child together. I told her that I think they can split for a while and see how it goes. She says that Jesus doesn't accept divorce and that marriage is for life, that she doesn't want to miss heaven because of divorce. Then I told her, after listening to you, that she cannot miss heaven. She said she would pray and ask God if she can divorce because uh, before getting married, she asked God and he answered that the man was the one. After her prayer, she called me a few days ago and said that she got these scriptures, 1 Corinthians 7, 10 to 11, Hebrews 10, 35, 38. She concluded that Jesus wants us to stay in marriage. But me, Global Baba, I am not convinced and I fear for her. What does the scripture say, please? You better get your mother out of that place before you get ready for burial. You better go get your mother out. Tell her to leave that place first. When Jesus finished working on the man, you should go back. If you want her alive, especially since she's not able to sleep anymore, she can't sleep, she's not happy, that's already, you know, dangerous for her health and well-being. So that's my advice. Get out of that place. Jesus is not the one that gave her a husband. She's the one that married the man. So if she had a revelation where Jesus gave her a husband, it was a, it was a dream. It wasn't from Jesus. It's very important. You better rescue your mother quickly so that she doesn't die before the time where she's supposed to die. Okay, Global Baba, we must leave it here. So we're spending the night in Canada, out there in the Americas. We're back tomorrow in style. Many thanks for staying tuned and enjoying our program. We continue on Radio in Uyo tonight. Yes, tonight we're live on uh, Inspiration, 9 to 10, Heritage, 10 to 12. Tomorrow morning, 5.45 XLFM. Tomorrow morning, 11 to 1 p.m. Radio Aquai Bomb, 1 to 3 XLFM. 3 to 5, Uno Yo FM, and we're back here tomorrow evening on Comfort FM, 6 to 8 p.m., GMT plus one, and on all platforms. Okay, so Global Baba, we must say bye-bye. This is Michael Bush, your anchor, inviting Global Baba to take us home. The Intercontinental, Mr. Bush. Glory to God, I tell you, man, it's been wonderful today. Thank you again. Everybody, thank you for giving us the opportunity to serve you the grace of God. Don't forget to invite more people to be part of us tomorrow. It's going to be explosive tomorrow as we continue to explore the riches of God's grace in Christ Jesus. It's, it's been a wonderful time. We love you guys. Enjoy the rest of your day until we see you tomorrow. Be blessed. Goodbye from Uyo, Nigeria. Amen. Amen. It is the will of God that we should be in good health always and be healed of every infirmity. If you don't need healing, someone around you definitely might need it. This is your opportunity and for those sick around you to be connected to the teaching of God's word for healing. Don't forget, God's word is God's medicine. I prophesy as your amen will come like thunder, you will swim in the miraculous. Power City International presents Harvest of Healing, Miracles, Signs and Wonders, ministering Dr. Abel Daminer. Date, 11th April to 18th April 2021. Time, Monday to Saturday, 6 p.m. daily and on Sunday, first service, 8 a.m. and second service, 11 a.m. GMT plus one. And a rebroadcast on the following radio stations. Radio Aquaibom 90.5 FM Uyo 11 AM to 1 PM XL FM 106.9 Uyo 1 PM to 3 PM daily Unio FM 100.7 Uyo 3 PM to 5 PM Comfort FM 95.1 Uyo 6 PM to 8 PM Inspiration FM 105.9 Uyo 9 PM to 10 PM Heritage Radio 104.9 Uyo, 10 p.m. till midnight daily and also on Kingdom Live Network Station. Also live on Facebook at Abel Damino Public Figure, YouTube Abel Damino Ministries International, Twitter Abel Damino and Instagram at Abel Damino. Watch real time. Venue. 
Power City International, number 98 Wangibo Road, Uyo, Akwaibom State, Nigeria. Host, Doctors Abel and Rachel Daminer. <laughs>